Tell me your full name. Rafael Federico Corral, G. Corral, G. for Gomez. Where were you born and what date of birth? It was March 24, 1925, in La Habra. Actually, it was Altavista. My brother, you're probably familiar with it, Altavista. And then we went and moved to La Habra. That's where my dad was feeding for this guy, uh, Ki Nui, Japanese, in Blue Hills. That's from the Long Beach earthquake, 1933. And from there, we went up to South Donna, 1930, 1937, uh, we went to Salinas. Mm -hmm. and, and then we came back uh, after the war. What are your parents' names? Federico, Tamen, Ibarra, Corral, and Everada. Gomez Corral. And where were your parents born? My dad was from Durango, Mexico, and then my mother was from San Zacatecas. Zacatecas. Came to the United States, you were born in La Habra, um, and then how many brothers and sisters did you also have? Tell me the story. Five brothers and five sisters. Uh, myself, Joe, Efren, Manuel, and Tony. And then Celia, Mary, Lupe, Angie, Carantina, and other Carantina that passed away. But there were only five left. There's only two left now. No, but yeah, two left now. And only me and my brother left. Uh, Manuel is a minister. This is a friend, he's a Puerto, 11th Airborne. Of course, I don't know, I don't know the, the battles he was in, but I know he was injured. I didn't actually you know the extent of his injuries, but I know his head and teeth and his lungs, but he died of kind of that. And Joe, the Navy, when they, they told me he was in Korea, uh, when they they dropped that bomb, you remember, uh, that bikini, bikini, uh, the island bikini, they had these uh, Japanese ships and German ships with uh, animals, and they dropped a bomb to experience uh, the other. And he, he came out with seizures and he died of that also right in foot in the next <clears throat> the next event. Well uh, my dad as far as I know they told me he was working in construction at the time. And then uh, that guy didn't pay off or whatever his, his uh, contract and then he went to work for this <clears throat> in his Japanese in uh, La Mirada, Kinoi. He worked there for fourteen years. That's when uh, he went to the circus Circo Escalante. Things didn't work out, so then we went after him and we couldn't find so then we went back to went back to uh, Salinas. We got back to Salinas. And we were there until uh, 19, when I went, 1944 when I was in the service. And then uh, we moved here in 1945. We'll see what happened. I was in doctor and they gave me two weeks. And I came to see a one of my uncles in La Habra, and he told me his, his uh, brother in TJ was pretty sick. So I went with him. So I, I was <clears throat> I was late about about a week and a half. So anyway, I went to the draft board in Santana, and I told him about what happened. He says, no problem, so you can leave one of my boys from here. And that's what happened. In fact, they pick us up at the police station there in Fullerton, right in the corner there, across from the church at Commonwealth, I think it is. <clears throat> And from there, they took us to Fort MacArthur. And they're taking for <clears throat> saying for prayer troopers, and me and Kiko, he's the one that left. Tell you that <clears throat> the dinner there in Placencia, we sent for prayer troopers. So then uh, <laughs> they sent him to Fort Benning, I believe. Kiko, the one sent for prayer troopers, but they left me in. I had to put him in KP. So then the third day, they said, Corral, you're going to Fort Orange, Salinas. I said, well, you know, I sent for prayer troops and my friend told me he was going to uh, Urbany, Georgia. He said, you're, you got to take infantry training first. Okay. So then he sent me to Fort Ord, and from there sent me to Watsonville, Kemp, McQuaid. I was there for about four days. They sent me to proceed in Monterey. From Monterey, they sent back to Fort Ord, and from Fort Ord, they sent me to Camp Roberts. And that's where I took uh, basic training, infantry training. So we finished the <coughs> finished basic training. I told the sergeant, you know, from here, I guess, from our job school or what? Why? He said, well, I signed for prayer trooper. No, no, no. He said, go talk to the captain up there. You're an infantryman. You're going to, you're going to go as a replacement. 
So that, that's what happened. They sent me to Fort Lewis, Washington. That's when we left from overseas, from Fort Lewis. And from there we went to Okinawa. I was assigned to Company E, 382nd Infantry, 96th Division. When we were going there, I recall the silence about the deck. We had just lost our commanding officer, who was President Roosevelt. And from there on, later on, uh, I believe mean, April the 1st when we hit Okinawa. And then the day hell broke loose. <laughs> I figure maybe about maybe four or five in the afternoon. And like I said, we're having a lot of artillery, but we didn't have that much like those beachheads that you see in some of the wars. We kept advancing all the time, and then later on, uh, and we got kind of stuck in that. They are telling you about that. Was first time I seen one of our men kill, you know, we kept going twice. But that was about the, the, the only time that was like, then we kept advancing, we kept running to position at the time later on, and especially those, uh, what they call those bonsais at night, and, and that's, it gets to me. It, <clears throat> and about two in the morning, the Japs kept coming up. We threw flares, and I went from here across the street, playing with even women with babies in their back. And uh, the following day, uh, the captain comes by, and he tells the sergeant, full of detail, and down below, bring all the ammunition here, right? equipment that is about. Five trucks of that mission had come up, equipment, <clears throat> but they were stuck. They could cut up the site. And so I was in that detail. And I seen this guy say, have you seen Kidoti? He says, no. I says, they got him last night. Where? Up here at 33. When you mean they, well, they killed him? So I told him, I got to take off there. No, no, wait, what, I got to go up there. So I took off. And they were on the street. They said, yeah, on those, on those panchos. Um, can you tell me how many Mexican Americans were in your company? Oh, we had about I, 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 about eight, eight or nine, mostly from uh, from uh, New Mexico. Yeah. Well, whenever we get together, like I had like uh, Cone Chow line together, and I know we had mass one day, but we started getting artillery, and, and then didn't. Uh, what we we're going to do, and one of the guys had, had a harmonica, and another guy, uh, another guy was dancing and singing. In fact, <laughs> I recall one day he, he had this coconut and feet and uh, like a Hawaiian and dancing because you know that's the only thing. <laughs> but we didn't do much of that because actually you know we saw always the guys were after us. <clears throat> you we didn't know you know snipers, a lot of snipers there. At one time, I, must, I figured it must have been a river going through there, with a bank there. And uh, we lay there, and they claimed it was a Japanese because we couldn't see anything like this, no man's land. And uh, uh, the captain, the captain took by, I had never seen him before, it looked like, uh, looked like a Noki to me, Ripley, Frankels, and who's the haircut. And he tells his man, he talks to the sergeant, he gets up, he says, man, he says, you know, when we tell you fix bayonets, you go up there and get those. And if you can't take those guys, don't come back. You understand? <laughs> so this guy next to me, <clears throat> he was from New Mexico. He says, Corral, I just said, I said, no, I said, that's fine. We got grenades, we got ammunition yet. So we we're talking, we started getting artillery, and he takes off. So the half of the bank came over us, kept the part of the division there. And he was one of them. And I was, I was thinking all the time, I was dying. How things, you know, you're there one day, and in a few minutes you're gone. Uh, but that's the only uh, thing that, you know, like I say, most of us were Mexicans there. That, that the, and I was wondering maybe that's why he reacted like that. I don't know. The guy had never seen it before. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, 
the sergeant there, the sergeant, he, he was also uh, married, but I, he wasn't, he didn't act like that, he was you know, nice to us. But I noticed when he got there, and I always thought that because we were Mexicans. That's how he wrecked with us. Like, you know, like I said, you go there, if you can take them, then don't come back. So we fixed the necessary for orders, but then we got artillery. And I guess half of us would have gone right there because I couldn't really know what we were going to run into. And, uh, but this guy just talked to me and all of a sudden he was gone. I was wounded. I was wounded June the, the 16th, I think it was. No, we're not. We took the seal about, must be about maybe, about 11 in the morning or 10. So we docked and then we secured the ice, we secured the, 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 the hill. So about, it was about maybe five, we're gonna, we're gonna move. So there's another fox next to me, talking to these guys, and I was like this, <clears throat> with a full field pack, and already got 300 rounds. And, and I had I had Dave right there, my Ryan Racer, when we're getting artillery, and all of a sudden, artillery, and I just felt my, it blew my head off. So I lay there, and I had trouble breathing, and, and blood. So then I looked around, but I, uh, that guy next to me, just uh, uh, smoke and dust. I couldn't see anybody. So I guess I would kill, I, I didn't know whatever happened to him. And big box, so I just climbed, and I took my, uh, my cartridge off, and I laid there, and I'm looking up. And then I was thinking, you, you know, they would tell you that uh, uh, heaven and hell, and I was wondering where I was going to go, really. And I looked up at the item, was, you know, nice and clear. I couldn't, couldn't believe it, I was, I was hit. I called you, I was looking for Anyway, I raced up and then the corn picking that one of the guys out there, <coughs> it was hit. You know, three guys that hit right in front of me. So he said, there's a guy up there, that was me. So they ran up there and picked me up and I walked in. Then they got me in the chest again. In fact, one of the corn got hit in the leg someplace. So they rushed me, that was part of a, like a sugar meal left, and they gave me your first aid. So they put me on the table there, patched me up, and put me in the jeep with the plasma. They took me up to the <coughs> beach, it was, uh, put me on those land, <coughs> landing barges, and uh, took me, uh, I don't know how far, I learned from Okinawa, I next to Okinawa. So then uh, I got through your state daylight. I figured it was up at maybe six in the afternoon. I had surgery. Two days later, the Japs came and they come and they got us again. And they got nurses, they got everybody. And I got hit again. I got blown about from here across the street. They had opened a colostomy or whatever, and had mouse to the side. And I was there for another. I was there for another maybe three weeks. If I'd have been there maybe another week, I think I would have died because. You know, I used to stink. I mean, not 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 bow, but yeah. pus coming. I had like rash all over me, blood all was being, and then I couldn't eat nothing. Then I I caught that uh, malaria. They had to tap my lung every other day, and uh, <clears throat> then a uh, temperature. And uh, like I say, you know, up there by seven or eight in the morning, it's hot up there. You just underneath that ten. So anyway. His son, he says, son, you'll be going to stay side next week. And I said, well, uh, I don't think I can make it. All you'll make it is, is uh, I'll tell you to see your friends, your, your, your parents, <coughs> and build your, build your morale up. He says, we got all the facilities to work. We got nothing to work here, you know. He's just a field hospital temporarily. And I said, well, okay. I didn't work for about, for about a year, I didn't do nothing. Right. Then I got me a job there in Fuller Manufacturing. And uh, uh, four, three boys and a girl, Freddie, Tony, uh, Rosemary, and Annie. <clears throat> What's your wife's name? Oh, you Isabel, Isabel Aguilera Corral, from La from the Havre, from Monta Vista. About when did you get married? Uh, 50, 19.
1950. And then from there, I took a job there. Weir, no, no, yeah, Weir, right here, Pico Rivera, is a, sa a salesman for Larry Banks, and then I went up to uh, right there, Weir in Atlantic for Johnny Gibbons Auto Sales, and then they went broke like they usually do. Then I took this job at Sheet Metal uh, for 20, 25 years, overly, overly manufacturing, right there, Riverside Drive and Fletcher. But then I had that stroke, and uh, so I couldn't go. I couldn't go back, and uh, from there on. I